Okay, I said I was going to show you guys how to do what we did in lab in a video, so this is that video. Uh, this is for the natural selection lab. This was the day we were looking at uh, flowers um, and drawing slides of flowers, and we had to deal with that big O data set. So the first thing we're going to go do is go to modesto.instructure. Uh, this is just the regular Canvas page you hopefully all know. And I'm just going to open, mine's called Ecology Spring 2020. Uh, yours might be called something else, but this is our class. I'll go to student view so I, I can see what you guys can see. Okay, so let's go over, we'll just go to modules. I think we were probably already on that, but that's all right. And we're going to scroll down to week four, and you're going to find Ecology Natural Selection Lab, uh, student spring 2020, and then there's a one, but get the Excel spreadsheet. Let's just click this, and it's going to take us to a preview of our big old scary looking data set. Then you'll just click on this again to download it. And we're going to open up a new tab and go to uh, sheets.new. It may ask you to log into your Google account. I'm already logged in. Uh, you go File, and we're going to go Open. So that was File, and then down to Open. And then we're going to go over here to Upload. Select File from your device. And I'm in Downloads, so it's going to be the first one I downloaded. You know, I have like 100 of them in here. Ecology, Natural Selection Lab. And then we get our big, scary data set over here. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is we need to figure out what is uh, sort of the general range of our data set here. And just you can kind of glance at it, and it looks like everything's pretty close, like 25, maybe 20 to 30 or so. But we got to see if there are any mistakes. So we're going to say equals min. And then I'm just going to click and select all of this data to figure out what the minimum value of our data set is. Type in. This is a problem, this minimum value here. Because, again, if you remember from class, the dashes represent where data could not be taken, whereas the zero represents a plant that is zero centimeters high. And that's not really possible, at least as far as I know. So I'm going to replace this zero with a dash. And our minimum value still says zero. So there's another zero hiding in here somewhere. Our data set's kind of small enough. We can just go find it by hand. Here it is right here. We'll replace that zero with a dash. And our, okay, now our minimum value is 22.0. I'm going to make a note right here that says um, zero values replaced uh, with dashes, and that'll be okay. We're going to do the same thing for max. Okay, remember when you're writing a function in Sheets, you start with an equal sign, and you type in the function that you want. So it tells us right here, max returns the maximum value in a numeric data set. It's going to tell us the biggest number in our data set here. So I'm typing max, open parentheses, just go select all of this data. And so our max value is 29, and that makes some sense. Our min value is 22. That's within our sort of expected range. So we're good there. I'm actually going to move these guys over. OK. Let's do the same thing for our next data set. We're going to min. We're going to max. So again, equals min, open parentheses. I'll just scroll down and try to select all of this data here. Okay, so there's more zeros in here. We'll find those in a second. Let's also find our max values. And I'm pressing shift and using the arrow keys to just select all the data I want. There's more than one way to find your data points. All right, and so Again, this is this is a problem. 321 centimeters 
is like an order of magnitude larger. So we have a we have a 321 and we have a zero that we need to find. Let's see if we can find this zero. Here's our zero. That one's gone. Replaced with a dash. Here's our 321. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and type right here. Uh, we'll say plant two generation 20 uh, data was clearly uh, an outlier outlier uh, original uh, excuse me original uh, value was I don't know three two one point three four five three seven three seven three three seven three there we go and we're just going to replace that with the dash because we don't know. We don't want to lose that data, but I really don't think it, it's a legitimate thing. But you do need to take notes just in case it is. All right, let's do the same thing down here for our third data set. Min max equals min. Open parentheses. Just go down here, select all this data. fact, I don't really feel like doing that again, so I'm just going to select our data range equals max, paste in our data range. If you didn't follow that, it's okay. You can just select everything. But again, these are, these are reasonable. These are now reasonable, and these ones up here are now reasonable. So we are trying to, to figure out the pattern of um, potential uh, height increase in these plants throughout generations. So we're going to take the average of each generation. But I suppose before we do that, we should, let's, let's make our decimal points look sensible. Because there's just too much here. So I'm going to select all of this data, and then I'm going to click decrease decimal places. Until we get down to, I think I told you guys two, one would be fine too, but we'll go with two. That's, that's all right. Do that again for this data set. All right, we'll do that again for this third and final data set. Two, there we go. All right, so now we're going to take the average across this row. We're going to see what the average plant height in this generation is. And it's suggesting that uh, I do this just based on the data because Sheets is pretty smart sometimes. But I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, open parentheses, and just go ahead and click, select all this data here. Do the same thing here, equals average, and we'll do C5 five through q5 two different ways of doing that another way you can do it is just select the cell with the formula you want to drag down just like we did in lab you go to the bottom right corner until your cursor turns from a pointer into a black x and you can just drag it down like that another way you can do it which uh, was pointed out by madeline is you just double click on this Oh, I guess it has to be the bottom one. Double click on this and the formula just goes. We're going to do the same thing over here. Equals average. Uh, we're going to say C27 through Q27. Uh, Again, we don't want the entire um, range of data. We just want that row because that represents one generation of plants. Oops, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this down. And another way to do this is you can just press Control C, copy that, and paste it here, and the formulas will come with it. And if you double click on the on the cell, you'll see that it is getting the correct data range, which is very important. All right, fantastic. So we have each generation averaged. Let's go over to our summary statistics over here. Um, we're just going to copy this. So this is for our control plants. I'm just going to copy that. Then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Special, Paste Values Only. Because again, Excel will try to bring formulas with it. 
I'll show you what I mean by that. If I just paste this, now it's getting the average of all of this stuff, and that's not what we want, right? We want it to just be the average of those plants, not like the average of the average and the average of this generation. So this isn't quite what we want. So again, you go to edit, paste special, paste values only. We're going to do the same thing for our bees. We're going to go to edit, copy. We're going to go to edit, paste special, paste values only. And we're going to do the same thing for these flies. Oops, so this is still bees. We're going to go down to the flies. Go to edit, copy. Go over to here, edit, paste special, paste values only. Um, and let's let's decrease the number of digits because it's kind of a lot to look at right now. Let's get it down to just two. Cool. So now we have a table that summarizes the height of each plant in centimeters for each generation based on pollinators. And the point of this lab is to show that pollinator preference can actually have an evolutionary impact on our plants. So I'm going to go up to generation. W3, and I'm going to press and hold shift and then use the arrow keys to uh, select all of our data here. The next thing we're going to want to do is go up to insert and chart. Let's see if that does what we want. And it did do what we want. So if you wind up with something weird looking, um, like a scatter plot or one of these weird bar graphs or column charts, um, here's how you change it. I'll show you the full way. So double click on your chart and you go to setup, not customize, but setup. And I think we're going to want a line chart. That looks great. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to limit this to where there is actually pertinent data. Um, and I think we got to go to customize for that. And we're going to go to vertical axis because we want to adjust this axis, right? We don't want to adjust our x axis. We just want to adjust the up and down y axis, not horizontal. I said not to do it, and then I clicked the wrong one. So vertical axis. We want our minimum value to be, I don't know, we'll say 20, and our max value to be uh, 35 seems reasonable. And so there you have it. So did pollinator selection have an impact on plant height? It appears to. Uh, it appears to have had an impact. So you see your controls and hoverflies are they're just kind of modulating around the same height, whereas if you allow bees to pollinate them, uh, they are getting taller. So the next thing we're going to want to change on our chart is we need to add an axis label because one of the first things I was talking to you guys about was the fact that if you don't have properly labeled axes, um, the chart may be bogus, <laughs> so, or at least something to watch out for. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, so we're going to go over to Customize, and then you're going to click on Chart and Axis Titles. So again, we were over here in Setup, and we were just editing. Oh, I guess we weren't in Setup. I guess we were in Customize. How did that happen? Uh, we were just editing our vertical axis, our min and max values, but now we're going to go to Chart and Axis Titles, um, I'm not sure what our title should be just yet. We'll work on that in a minute. But we're going to go to our vertical axis title. Our horizontal axis title is already fine. It shows the generations. But our vertical axis title is going to be uh, plant, or we'll say average uh, plant height. And then we'll put our units centimeters. Okay, and now let's think about our chart title. Uh, we're going to say pollinator versus, I will say plant height increase based on pollinator choice. Something, something like this. C H O I C E. Eh, it's kind of a cheesy title, but we we could workshop it later. But it'll it'll work for your guys' notebook. So the next thing we're going to want to do is, if you're not printing in color, which printing in color is expensive, so I wouldn't recommend it, you have to go to Series. And from Series, 
or I'm sorry, let's go back. You go to Customize, and then you go to Series. And then from here, you can select each thing that you've plotted, Control Bs and Hoverflies. And you're going to want to change the shape. So Control can be that. Uh, Bs can be squares, I suppose. And Hoverflies, I guess, will be uh, diamonds. It doesn't matter, and it could be stars. Um, you don't you don't have to do this step, but if you do print it out not in color, I would recommend uh, changing or you know shading them differently so you can actually tell what's going on. And we're just going to grab this guy once again. Edit, copy, get rid of you, edit, paste, paste unlinked yet again. And there you have it.